Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist, an ichthyologist and also a PhD student specialising and studying um, the morphology and evolution of floral cards catfishes, also known as plecos in the gram trade. So today I'm going to talk about fish disease and that means I'm going to kind of make a disclaimer, I'm not a fish pathologist. If you're having any issues with fish diseases and fish pathology, then it's best to find a trained individual who has experience and studies um, elements of fish pathology, so whether it be a vet or a fish pathologist themselves. and they be able to give you the best course of action or recommend the right, right course of treatment um, or even diagnosis when it comes to fish diseases. So, to, on to the topic more. Epistylus is a disease that's listed in the aquarium hobby, but it's kind of right now, um, particularly as devastating, harmful, um, worse than, well, it's particularly like fear mongering. Its popularity though as something people diagnose has increased over recent years as being similar to or instead of white spot. But is it? I think when you look at the literature it will say something completely different. So Epistylus is a genus of protozoa containing around 200, well over 200 species. Protozoa being a sort of a pick and mix of different eukaryotes. So protozoa itself is I guess more of a common name in a way because it is so polyphyletic containing just a pick and mix. Um, and it's for sort of those that haven't been put into other well known groups I guess like fungi, plants, animals. And algae are kind of the same sort of condition, but then they also end up in um, uh, bacteria, some of them. So, Epistylus is colonial with a stalk that cannot contract. It's almost similar looking to Vorticella, which is another protozoa that's quite closely related, that does have a stalk that can contract. It's quite easy to see with the naked eye, and it's quite common, I think, within most aquariums. It kind of looks a bit hazy when you look through it or it's kind of in little patches and also similar to an animal known as Vorticella um, to rotifers which aren't colonial I think so much but they do look similar in that filter feeding aspect so they are similar in so although they might not always be closely related the, uh, the rotifers and the Vorticella and the epistylis they are filter feeders, hence why they have that similar morphology, likely feeding on bacteria, other protozoa, a whole host of different things. And therefore, it's kind of like that similar morphology to reach a similar conclusion or solve a common problem. So, the majority of epistylus is parasitic to some extent, but not all are parasitic to fishes and there are some that aren't parasitic at all and it seems generally that outbreaks occur when the immune system of the fish has been stressed or reduced maybe by high um, organic loads or thermal pollution. More than often though also this parasite is connected with other sort of pathogenic um, organisms such as particularly the bacteria Aromanus, um, hydroph Hydrophilia? Hydrophila, something like that. And it's common um, in the hobby that, like, the hobby does suggest that often it is connected with pathogenic bacteria, and hence why a lot of people recommend certain treatments for it. So, the myth here is the diagnosis of the disease. Uh, frequently, epistylis, as I've mentioned before, is has been identified by fish keepers with the white knot spots on the body of the fish and it can be to varying extents which to me hints that it's dark people are diagnosing just because of those white spots and not looking further because white spots could mean anything um, a lot of diseases will have a similar morphology and to actually look at maybe a bit more of the symptoms than just one um, so, so it's mostly diagnosed by fish keepers in that manner. But the origin of this actual identification, I have no idea, because it entirely differs from the scientific literature. The scientific literature totally disagrees with this. So, 
uh, identify epi stars. The scientific literature itself doesn't give a clear cut way of diagnosing it from the human eye and a microscope is definitely needed if you're going to diagnose epistylus. That's why I do not think it's a good idea to recommend it online or diagnose it online without seeing any microscope, uh, microscopy sort of analysis because that's where it is so distinctive. It's not as distinctive on the body of the fish itself, hence why the literature does diagnoses it using a microscope. You'll see hundreds of microscope, well, microscopy images of epistylus and very few of how it affects the fish itself. So the actual um, not spots are not seen in that literature at all. It's not so it almost it makes me question what people are what diseases. Uh, how many diseases are just getting put under epistylus that were once put under white spot and whether it is white spot as well because it's highly likely that white spot isn't just some in insignificant um, disease um, it's still very well uh, referenced in the literature and a lot of it is stereotypically those spots so Generally, there does seem to be some symptoms associated with large cysts, not like the cysts of white spot, but sort of like very more nodules, um, inflammation, lesions and erosion. So some fish might be asymptomatic and there are variations like a result of different parasitic loads and that because there's so many species of epistylus, it probably will depend on epistylus itself and maybe what species it's targeting. So generally the health of the fish, a microscope is needed, <laughs> um, but I think the, those large cysts look more similar to me, like um, KBV, I'm not saying it's KPV. I mean they look more similar like uh, KPV, uh, Koi papillomavirus, or a lot like carp pox, so they are sort of those slimy nodules. And then that when it's uh, found also with the bacteria, those bacteria are going to have their own symptoms, such as that, uh, um, the, uh, how do I, the aromas hydrophilia, hydrophilia, I can't pronounce it the way I want to pronounce it, um, which is more that real red blush, the red, not even a blush, it's, um, uh, so I think it's like a hemorrhaging septicemia kind of thing and that's probably the most, uh, probably maybe the most rapid way it would kill. So it's definitely worth using a microscope and if you're going to use a microscope it will be much easier to diagnose it from um, white spot which is a very different um, morphology to um, even on just the appearance of the fish. So it's definitely always worth checking, double checking the literature. If you find something or you're not sure or you just want to double check, you might find it totally different to what many people are suggesting and this isn't the first thing that you just need to check the literature and it totally disagrees with these myths that people and websites are saying. And just because a website says it's scientific doesn't mean it is double check the references, are they actually using their references correctly, are they actually able to read the references, well critically analyse references, <laughs> whether they're reading it, some um, I've seen a case where someone they've even read the abstract of something they were citing to support them, because it didn't support them, but um, so how should you treat epistylus? This is a question best left I think with a pathologist or vet who has experienced knowledge and can recommend the most precise, reliable, um, less side effects course of action and also maybe re regarding actual diagnosis because I'm not a pathologist, I, can't, I don't think it's right for me to recommend a particular treatment when firstly the hobby for so long has misdiagnosed it None of the papers I actually looked at recommended how to treat it um, and also treatments vary depending where you are in the world. We have our own legislation compared to America, uh, for, particularly when it comes to uh, antibiotics. Um, 
they are le only legal by prescription in the UK so you need to go to a vet or um, some uh, someone with the uh, what's it licenses I guess so a pharmacist but pharmacist for animals and it does need to have a proper checkup because um, antibiotics are well they have so many side effects in the fact not just the actual health of the organism the person and whatever but also down the food chain when it comes to sewage um, they can damage sewage plants they can damage wild populations um, and they're just not great in general so I'll end this video here um, thank you for watching if you like my uh, videos please comment like and subscribe and I'm happy to answer most questions anyway um, in the comments or whatever and thank you for watching